Yep. And now we're live. Welcome to Twitch. Welcome to YouTube. All things, all things good. All things juicy. Chat should start spooling up. People should be able to start seeing stuffs, talking to us, getting this show Ooh. on the road. It's showtime. Yep, it does look like it we're, we're up. We're live. It indeed, we are. Showtime. Alrighty. Um. Well, with zero in our audience as of right now, uh, screw it. Might as well just go yep. ahead and start introducing ourselves. Everybody, uh, everybody already knows who we are, but we might as well go over it again, as usual. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm Drex, I'm a guy who does things, and the things I do are good. <laughs> Hi, Drex. <laughs> it's the Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. Hi, Drex. <laughs> No, no, you see, th this is the Star Citizenship's Anonymous meeting, because we have a problem. Oh, we, we, yeah. we do have a problem. <laughs> I, I love how this is how we're starting it, just, like, taking shots at ourselves. Oh, we absolutely. Well. And, like, they're all shots that were worth taking, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, no, in all seriousness, I'm Drex. Uh, one of the directors of Lifeboat Logistics, the uh, the wonderful org that brings this show to you guys every week at 7 p.m. EST. Uh, and then I will throw it on to one of the other yahoos to tell you guys who they are. This goes. Oh, I guess I'm going then. Well, hello, I'm Icarus. I have an Idris problem. Hello, Icarus. Oh. <laughs> hello, Hi, Icarus. Drax. <laughs> No, I am the combat division lead for LBL. We do all things explosive, ground combat, air combat, and escorting you know, our fellow allies and other citizens through the universe when they need it. Hi, Chris. Hi, Hi, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess it'll be my turn then. Hi, everyone. <laughs> like I am 10 forward. I am Hi, 10, 10 forward. Hi. <laughs> I'm the science and exploration division lead, and I have a problem. Um, <laughs> my problem is that I spend way too much money on this game and have nothing to show for it because I just end up melting everything back to store credit. <laughs> Hi, I um, have a problem. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, yes, yeah, that's me. We do stuff. Not a whole lot of stuff right now. Um, but with but, but with with near future updates things will change but for now we kind of just do some medical stuff and that's about it the, the star says and catch line soon yeah, soon soon, soon. <laughs> uh real quick just want to address a comment from a viewer uh talb says go to bed 10 no all right <laughs> All <on>. right, <laughs> acknowledge. We did say in our announcement on our server earlier today, we're going to be taking questions and trying to field them. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for your question. Yeah, thank you for your question. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> this question. Oh man, I, I, uh, I know. If, to everybody else, this seems like absolutely unrivaled chaos, and it is. I think that's the best part of the show every week is that it's just a nightmare. It is. It it gives it flavor. It does. Yeah, I think that's the charm that really sets us apart. Is that we don't know what we're doing either. So, no, it's a it's a very um, man. We're not very big, so like I feel like I can say the name of a TV show, but I also don't want to, so we don't get sued. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that one car show with the British guys that everybody knows. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, we're channeling no. that energy. Anyway. Oh, uh, can I be James? Hey. Oh, yeah. wait. <laughs> Hang on. No names. We're, we're channeling uh, bottom biscuit energy, I think is is it called? Exactly. Uh, can I be the cheese guy? You the know. cheese guy from bottom biscuit. I mean, well, but without the airplane real. stuff. No. The, the rest of our week is organized. It's boring. Stuff goes on. And here, we just toss a confetti grenade into the room and see what happens. Oh, exactly. Exactly. So after what is, I think, arguably our most chaotic <coughs> intro yet, and 
like i don't know if we're gonna be able to top that i want to see how it goes as we go let's get right <laughs> into the news to uh, <laughs> to, reference, to reference another uh, content creator who's not been in a very good time i think <laughs> i think his channel died i'm pretty sure but uh, that's, i'm pretty that's, sure it did i would say that's against the point um we're here for star so, citizen so let's talk star you, citizen are you sure we don't want to just start ripping off other content creators then uh, we, we could um I don't know. Uh, Fridays with LBL is that is that enough of a rip off? And we'll do it on a Saturday because sure. it's not like the original person ever got it right on time anyway. Uh, look, look. Yeah. If we get if we get sued, all I got is a quarter, and I don't want to sell my ships. I was like, sue me for all you want. I have nothing. There's a reason I'm sitting here doing a live stream about Star Citizen. I have nothing left to give. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think we're all in that same boat. So, oh yeah, we're we're all in the same lifeboat. In the same uh, lifeboat. Uh, <laughs> ah. All uh, right. Anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> moving <laughs> right along. <laughs> um. Yes, I've already. We've already given our health. <laughs> Thank you, Tao. <laughs> moving along. Uh, I think the first thing and. Uh, some weeks I have the visual ready, some weeks I don't. Lucky you guys, this week I have the visual ready. Um, we got a very nice sneak peek from CIG, and it was one of the least cryptic ones in a while. Uh, I'm going to pull it up right here. You mean they just gave us something? Uh, right? Um, so <laughs> for some reason, that. even though the image itself is like... It is like... 8k resolution for some reason google is just compressing it to high hell that terminal <laughs> says item bank um and if you look at the original image and it doesn't compress it to death you will be able to see on the top there it does say item bank and people have already figured that out this is theoretically the new inventory system coming to 323 which does seem like station-wide inventory is about to go down the pipe, but maybe these item banks will be better? We'll see. I, I honestly think some organization like this is needed, because let's be honest, it is an absolute cluster with the current inventory. It's a mess. Yeah, the potato says we white be desired. He says, wipe question mark. I'm going to say no. I just think they're going to give us an alternative way to access the inventory as opposed to wiping our inventory. I think the inventory is largely going to be the same. It's just a different I way wouldn't, to do it. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a wipe come pyro. Yeah, I don't think we're seeing a wipe now, but we'll probably see a wipe this summer when they said that they want to do 4.0. Yeah. Which is like is fair. Um, as the database gets more and more, uh, we'll, we'll call it piled on top of. It's just going to get a little bit more confused. So hopefully mm. we get to the point where it's not. <clears throat> I mean, I feel like at some point it, it's just. I mean, well, obviously at some point it's just not going to happen, especially with the persistent entity stuff and then of course moving on to eventual server meshing and things of that nature it's yeah. everything's going to be able to be kept in its own little areas and kept neat and organized and i feel like the big wipes just become unnecessary exactly well, and who knows maybe we won't even get one like it, it's purely speculation like we they could just be done with wipes we we could be near that point or at that point yeah, we could we could not see a significant wipe until beta, I guess, is what they said like their next <laughs> scheduled wipe is. I can I could definitely see some soft wipes, some basic things that like how they do um like ammunition consumables, maybe well, even Well, yeah, and that AUC. that goes every time they patch the game. AUEC yeah. I think would be the last thing to get wiped right now even though like it, it's kind of run rampant. Mm -hmm. Um it seems to be the only part of the database that, like, regardless of how much of a cluster it becomes, it just holds together, which is good. Yeah. 
and it it doesn't really have that big of a, a impact on on the way things no. work because it's just it, it's just a, n- a number in the database. Well, right it's now, not it's actually... just fun money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just fun money. All right, so that that was our sneak peek of the week, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Chrome window away so that everybody can see the background that I've chosen very correctly for another big thing that happened this week. <laughs> Boof. I know, uh, I know Icarus is going to love this picture. Ah! That's right, guys. We are getting... It's happening! We are getting another Mercury Star Runner variant. I'm very it's, excited yep. to announce It's another that. Mercury Star Runner variant, exactly. <laughs> As you can see on the right side, it's the back thruster there. Yeah, yeah. right there. Yeah. In fact, they, they <laughs> talked about just removing the interest altogether. Oh yeah, hundred percent. There's going to be a fully the... symmetrical Mercury Star Runner, actually. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're actually doing it to add a couple more cutter variants in as well. Yeah, so exactly. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> All jokes aside, um, does anybody else want to speak on the news we saw earlier this week involving the address, or do you guys want me to take that? I, me, 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 me. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for letting Icarus. I was saying, you know, do I, I said that so that he could take it on if he wanted to, and also tell me <laughs> to do it if he didn't. <laughs> I was saying, yeah, shut up, drinks, get out of my way. This is my time. <laughs> all right, let's see what you got. <laughs> okay, so big stuff with the Idris this week. Because I, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I do believe they were piling the Idris P around, if I'm not wrong. Uh, yes, so yeah. to start it off, the devs. Did challenge players to board and steal an Idris P, I think, Tuesday night? Yes. I believe so. It, um, it's and being piloted by CIG devs, not an AI thing. Yep. Yes. And that in itself is big because we have just had... I'm pretty sure it's just the Idris M for running around for the missions, like, for the pirate missions, and the, uh, like the extreme distress calls, mm. the fact that the Idris P is in is showing progress because that's a different variant. It may not seem like a lot, but the fact <laughs> they're getting the variant set in is a huge step. Plus the fact that the challenge was to board the ship and take it over. Boarding the ship means the interiors are in. It's happening. So, in fact, oh, time for go ahead. I was gonna say, in fact, the streamer did manage to get onto the Idris, not for very long, but they did manage to get in, and yeah, there's there's an interior now. It's not just you know <laughs> this <empty> space. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I remember the old you know you could go actually hijack the Idris and pilot it around, but there was no chair, there was no console, it was just a gray blob. I would say that that is precisely where this picture in front of you comes from. It is the first patch where an Idris was stealable, and uh, your boy Drex thieved one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, but to to double down on that, um, that statement from just before... There are, I believe, three or four videos floating around of people who have not only like shut the address down, but teams that have gotten on board and have wiped out all enemy presence on board them. Um, the last couple nights, it looks like uh, CIG has been letting the AI take the addresses for a spin. Uh, they wanted to use, I assume, devs the first time, because if the servers absolutely exploded, they could just delete the thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, so there have been there have been teams that have got on, taken control. Uh, I think the idea of taking control of an interest is super cool. Uh, if you haven't watched the videos, I will summarize super quick. You fly in the docking port or the open door after blowing the thing open, and then put copious amounts of bullets into everything you see, and just expect to die because nobody that gets on the ship has any trigger discipline whatsoever. <laughs> no, the, it, it, it's really cool to see a larger ship that you could fly into and land. Yeah. Oh, well. And like, seeing 
the ship's inside was kind of wild. The like carcasses of ships blown up on the inside as people tried to like <laughs> eject into the hangar. <laughs> <laughs> but the the absolute madhouse that event was. And the the thing is, I can only imagine what the devs were thinking of putting up the announcement of, hey, come hijack a, like, you know, a fully functioning Idris. It, oh, yeah. Uh, chaos. Absolute chaos. Yeah, I was... I for... oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I think for me, the, the biggest part, and I understand Icarus, of course you're going to be excited for the Idris, but mm-hmm. for me, the biggest part of that was sort of the first inkling we, we got of like boarding actions and larger ships that are able to be boarded and commandeered versus you know you're you're right now the ships we have are re- relatively small compared to stuff like that you don't there's not really a lot of opportunity for for boarding actions there it's just you know yeah blow it up or soft death it and open a hatch like this is a little more in depth and i'm very excited for that exactly so i think our last <clears throat> piece of news for the week or at least last piece of news that i think we're gonna go over for the week is isc this week was on the underground slash above ground distribution centers those are moving mm-hmm. along quite quickly yes they very are exciting. and I I think the really cool thing they mentioned about it as well that they kind of seem to double down on is the fact that these are going to be new social spaces as well, depending on which faction holds them. Oh, yeah. that was yeah. that was my favorite part of the video is that they had said in like in I'm going to paraphrase here. They what? said it's a social space in some of them. Like if you went to Grey Cat, it would be a social space because it's a it's a showroom. But depending on the owner, or depending on the reason you're there, somebody could be like at the top of the like the tower. They could land their Avenger, and they could be just walking a box inside. La da da da, and you can have an, a whole raiding force down on the ground, rolling tanks and APCs right in the base, and missions will put people there at the same time. I, it's, I'm very excited <laughs> for that. I mean, to, to me, the idea of going to a base, you know, maybe dropping off a delivery, going to talk to someone, and you come outside and you see, you know, a couple A1s dropping bombs and, like, forces <laughs> moving in the ground to go after it, It's going to be a wild, like, what, what is going on here? Oh, because it'll go <clears throat> way, way harder than it should. And we all know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. To, to peaks. I, oh, God. Jesus. The Drex, you go first. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, Drex I'll first. Finish, I'll finish what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, just so you guys know, not scripted. Very obviously not scripted. Um, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is going to be the ways that they've said you can interact with these buildings just being very player-driven. Like, kind of do what you want. If you've been given a mission, there are ways to complete it that aren't walk in with a big gun and shoot everybody. Yeah. And that's that's probably one of the most unique things that, that ties into what I was going to say, actually, is the interiors of these bases are really, really cool. They They look different. They definitely function different because you have warehouses... You have the whole outside area. It it is quite literally a living, breathing facility. And then, yeah, like you like just said, Jax, on top of that, you go in and do missions, everything is go, shoot, boom, go away. Stealth, sneaking, finding paths, opening events is going to be a thing. And I love it. Uh, another one that I want to say to, I guess, anybody watching, plus mostly our community, um, CIG inadvertently has made the challenge of can players get vehicles into these things? Um, they said <laughs> there's there's bullards that'll keep vehicles out. I don't believe and or trust in their bullards. So 
Uh, we ideally will be able to do it on stream, but you guys can be confident that we'll at least have some screenshots uh, that LBL will have done it as soon as possible. Yes, we, we will be on the front lines getting unnecessarily large vehicles inside these places. If I don't get a spot uh, as, through the door, I'm gonna be mad. I was like, as Jared said there when he when he asked the question and he told me he said, You just challenged the community. We're gonna take it. Yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Just a, you can't stop us. A slight tangent on that. We still have to try again to get the uh the what was it, the dragonfly or the hover quad into the space station? Yep. Yes. We got. We got to give that another try. <laughs> we got so close. I'll say maybe. Uh, maybe next week I can bring the picture up. Uh, but back when, man, anybody who remembers Levski's ancient to this community. Back when that existed, I managed to get a Nox into the back room of the bar. And if it's the same station, I'll show you guys when it uh, when it comes back. It is. Oh, it was truly astonishing. It was a That's magnum opus. Wonderful. That's funny as hell. That's like down. That's like down six flights of stairs and two elevators. Well, I remember what we we did manage to uh, a while back. We got a bunch of uh, cutters into the <laughs> the bar area and uh and microtech. In the promenade. And then we we drove around one of the little the little gray cat quads and just drove around in security <laughs> armor yelling at people. It, oh, it was goodness. great. <laughs> yeah, we were pulling people over. It's <laughs> <Stop. laughs> See, they but this is what the game's through. all about, right? It was this wonderful. Is, this is Star Citizen in a nutshell. Like, and it's all it's all stupid. We all know everything yeah. that is going on is stupid. And but we it's love it. It's just so much fun. That's what makes uh, it fun. That darn shame. I don't think I have those photos, but I will. Uh, I'll have to show off the room to people when uh, when that comes back yes. maybe I'll do it again maybe I'll get a knocks down there again see if they fixed it or not <laughs> I just want to uh, real quick just checking over our chats here because I'm keeping track of stuff I do agree with Potato more social spaces are needed in this game so that we can continue doing dumb stuff like that with even more people 100% and yes, Talb Social LBL Bar Night. We'll just take we'll just take cutters back into the promenade. Yeah, oh, exactly. <laughs> that, that's the goal. Yeah, right. Perfect, perfect ideas. Because like in a game like this, that's what that's what you do. You not only do you do missions, but you can just be social and like this is just your second life. Yeah, you can make with- your own fun. Hmm. I mean, some of the best memories I have on this game, you know, while I do have a bunch of epic moments I remember, you know, in space combat or ground combat, some of the nights of just chilling and talking in Star Citizen at the social areas is incredibly fun. Yeah. Yeah, because we can still talk and have a conversation just like we would in in like a Discord VC just normally or, or over text. But the concept of being able to do it in a virtual social space which, I mean, kind of the whole point of, like, VR chat, that sort of deal. But this is a little different with it being in a large community game that we all love and enjoy. And we can just do whatever we want in that setting. Exactly. Like, where where else are you going to get to hang out with the boys and fly spaceships inside of, you know, citizen, inside of uh, buildings? That uh, people <laughs> habitate, like, you know. That doesn't happen in real life. But where else can you have a drink with the homies with someone wearing, you know, a hospital gown and then watch a ship fly into the building next to you? Oh, yeah. Well, and, like, as things go on, um, it's been a, like, it's been a weirdly dry content cycle for SC, but I hope that we get, like, good clips and stuff out. Uh, I know a couple of us have uh, TikTok pages so if you click links down below, I believe you can find your way to them. Um, but we've got we've got some fun stuff that's been going on, and we're hoping to have more. Obviously, I think oh, we yeah. will. Want I think right now, Star Citizens in a little bit of a stagnation period, just waiting for three twenty three. 
but well, and, once that drops, we'll have the ability. Yeah, so talking to people in our community and stuff, a lot of people are, I'll say, tired out of the current s- stuff because it's been kind of bumpy and bulky for a while here. We haven't gotten a lot. But after seeing all the upgrades coming, people are just kind of waiting. And it's so close now. I think people want to... I think people are making no themselves want to play Star Citizen even more. So when it does come out, it feels really good. Yeah, I've been holding off personally um, getting in the verse for like long play sessions because I do want to get in and like have that interest to sink my teeth into it when this stuff comes out. Because it would be a disservice if I just played myself into being bored of it right yeah. before this kind of change happened. A hundred percent. That's a big thing. You don't want <clears throat> to burn yourself out on it. And especially with the way the game is now, I mean, we all kind of know everything. Like we, exactly. like, we all know everything about it. There's nothing really new happening right now. But As Todd said, community tea break. Exactly. Yeah, yeah pretty much. All right, well, with that said, uh, it looks like we're about halfway into our show, which is a great time to transition into uh, a little bit of an an Arena Commander second episode. We're going to try some Master Modes as like a a multi-crew ship, see if that's good, bad, and or ugly. And then we're also going to open the floor for our, our glorious members here, if anybody wants to be subject to... I'm going to call it a micro-interview, but even if you just want to talk about like features we've seen in the last couple weeks, stuff like that, feel free to ding us in Discord, ding us in the Twitch chat. Just let it be known, and we'll uh, we'll bring you guys online and see what's up. Indeed, indeed. And there is one other thing that happened in the news this week that I do feel is very important to a lot of people. Um... The whole discussion of persistent hangers has now become much more solidified. But not only that, all my fellow owners of armor from the actual store where you have to spend money, it's finally happening. We're going to be able to get our gear back after death. Very excited for that. (laughs) That was a soon TM until... Well, until that sneak peek, really, because that global item inventory is what's supposed to be doing it, so... It's uh, that honestly, that's a big deal on change because that has been an issue for a lot of people. Exactly. Oh yeah, and Tal's right here. Time to spend more money. I mean, <laughs> exactly. That's been one of the biggest reasons I haven't bought like a lot of the um the like legacy stuff, like the RSI exploration suits and the Zeus exploration suits, stuff like that. They're cool, and I really want to collect those in a sense, but like. That not right now. I'm not spending real money on that right now. It's when they're gonna get gone. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All <clears throat> right. So, uh, Ten and Icarus, you guys are in my lobby already. Feel free to ready up when you're ready, and then we're gonna jump in and we'll give as we go. We'll give kind of our quick and dirty opinions of how it's going. Um, we are doing gameplay, so obviously, like. If something goes into chat and we miss it, it's not because we hate you or anything. We're just following along a lot of things at once. We hate you for other reasons, but not that. (laughs) Exactly. Precisely. (laughs) All right. Ooh, Bloodshot Ridge. This is going to be kind of cool. Uh, I'm going to enable multi-crew. Do they have... Oh, they have in-atmo stuff? Uh, They do, it appears. Uh, feel free I... to try and spawn on my Connie. I don't know how this is going to work, but... So, I clicked multi-crew enable. Oh, okay. I am in your bottom turret. Okay. Check That's how you're able to click on me and go to the top turret. Um, and and he, he should be on the right yep. side there after you enable. Yep. I see you. Uh, and then... spawn. Yep, hey, I am in your top turret. Okay, cool. Wow, um, it, nice. it, it just works. Uh, honestly, it should, folks, it's shocking to me. Oh, I forgot, I forgot how nice the Connie turrets were, I won't lie. They are quite nice. Yeah. Just, it's like, we've, we've played, uh, for a hot minute, we were playing um, in the Redeemer, which, love the Redeemer, 
but using the top turret, like your your field of view is just gone. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's see how far we survive here. Ooh, someone. Uh, yeah. You guys was that you, you guys on the missile? No. Ah. Oh, there was just one. Wow. Well, uh, um, I'm trying to remember all the buttons here. <laughs> Cameron Lady Man. That's a that's a name. Oh man, the turrets feel good in master mode. Do they? Okay. They do. Oh yeah. I was because no, the carny get, feels good. This feels really good. You get a really nice clear ping for them now. Oh, that's that's good. The new targeting system too. It just feels so nice. It, it does, and like <clears throat> hit tracking just feels more on point. If that makes any sense. Hundred <laughs> percent. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have not been in a turret in so long. This is so weird to me. <laughs> it feels so nice, though. It's, it, wow, it's, this is wild. Uh, I'm so happy to see multi-crew functioning in Arena Commander. One, like, I, I'm not fast, but I can bring the nose around. And by the time I bring the nose around, you guys are normally already on a target. Oh, yeah. Now, also, the one difficult thing right now with turrets is you cannot see which modes you're in. Oh, okay. True. But I'm assuming that's because this is very early still. Yeah. But, but it even without it, nice. it's... <clears throat> I don't think turrets have ever felt this good. This is no. No, this and is one thing kind I'm, of astonishing. One thing I'm loving about this is it it gives you that opportunity if you just want to jump in with the boys and you know run some pirate swarm or just do some combat. There's no, you know, make sure you got your respawn set at this station. Everyone getting their ships and well, if you die, well, you know, you got to go through the whole thing of getting back in. And no, it's just squat up and so go have fun. Something else that just happened that's really nice. There was a tar the target moved above me, so I couldn't deal with him. I turned around, and there was a target below me that it auto locked for me yes. to start fighting. Oh, that's that, was... that is beautiful for a turret. It is nice. Well, I'm like, I don't know if it's just master modes or like turrets have gotten better over the last little while, but. With the Connie being able to kind of get around, I feel like you guys are having a much easier time on the turrets than you were before. Oh, oh yeah. No, oh, 100%. I'm not... I can actually, yeah, lock on and keep on a target. Well, I can roll. That's the other thing that Connie didn't have, was roll. There was no roll. <laughs> you can roll, and the whole time that you're doing those maneuvers, I'm still able to keep on my target. Yep. Yeah. So I, I'm still being effective at, at, you know, screening the smaller stuff while you're dealing with something else. Well, and this Gladius so is, the... is pissing me off, but, like, that's where you guys come in place, because it sounds like right. it's working. Well, yeah. The beautiful thing about this as well with the turrets is, like, when I can't lock a certain target, I move over to the next one, it's auto-locking everything for me, so I can take on what's in my field of view. I would say that's new, right? The, uh, the auto-lock. Yes. I, yeah. Because I turned this it off. This was a needed I more, change. I want more control when I'm in a pilot seat, but if auto lock is a thing that happens in a gunner seat, I feel like that's a huge step in the right direction. It, it oh, is. Yeah. It makes a lot more sense in a gunner seat too. Whereas you're you're the pilot, you need to focus on what you're what you're locked in on. Whereas for me, I just need to lock onto the closest thing and and start hitting them. Yeah. Like uh, I, I need is to your chase. Gyro mode working. Uh, it is, yes. I had to actually oh. go into the F menu and find it on the panel. Oh, there we go. There it is. Oh, okay. Now we're <laughs> Better, <talking>. yeah? <laughs> Alright, we're getting oh, our yeah. first real resistance here, which is good. I, like, I'm, I'm glad we're getting some actual combat resistance here. Right. Those first couple waves were kind of, um, 
wimpy, to say the least. Yeah. And if you guys have keybinds for it, see if you can lock a missile from your uh, from your turret position. Um. Hold tight. Let me actually, if I can force that into a keybind on my mouse, real quick. Yeah, you got a second while the uh, the AI are doing their thing. Also, I don't know if anybody can see it on the stream. Um, I am using Galdrians on this constellation, and I have 70 rounds before my Galdrians run out of ammo. So, like, I can very much fight a smaller target without a huge issue. So, so this is... I, I've never had a Connie experience like this in a gunner's seat, let alone th this is the best it's ever felt, especially in turrets. This is... It's oh, a far cry from what like, it was. We're in atmosphere, and I can, I can move the Connie. The new Connie in atmosphere is like what the old Connie was in space. Not the best ship ever, but like... very passable. The really nice thing, though, is you get an incredibly clear indicator in the turret of the ship that you have targeted and its pathing. Oh yeah, okay. It's much... much clearer. Oh, well this is good, because we're about to go after a uh, another constellation here. Let's go! We'll make a point of shutting his lights off. Just, oh my, it's so easy to trace and actually follow the target now. This is... I don't know what game I'm playing, but I like it. No, and admittedly <laughs> flying to, like, intercept this Connie felt good too, which normally it wouldn't. And there's... so I could technically put the ship on... <clears throat> I don't know what the gimbals do, or what like fixed and gimbal do now. I, I feel like there's a button I need to press. Um, but I think, theoretically, I could put the guns on gimbal tracking. For reference, I don't think I'm able to lock missile. Okay. I know yeah, it's something that works just seem to be. Now, I wonder if, since we're multi-crewing here, if we'll lose all three lives if we die with the ship. I assume we would, probably. Uh, maybe. Not sure, but I, I don't know. I, I think it, since we're doing a multi-crew, I think it'd be nice to have the lives be all together. Like, if the, the ship, maybe it's the ship lives instead of player lives. Exactly. I would agree. Otherwise, one mistake just ends the entire run. Yeah. Oh, we're hitting another Connie. I was like, what is soaking up all that fire? <laughs> yeah, and uh, <clears throat> this reminds me why I hate the Constellation cockpit, because the, uh, the struts are just abysmal <laughs> for holding a target. <laughs> oh, we got more. Here we oh, go. Oh, that's a lot. I said now I'm I'm actually super interested to maybe bring um, what is it bring the hammerhead out even if it's just three of us. Oh yeah. See see that thing's firepower. 
Oh, exactly, right? Because no, I'm the, just the trying to imagine. The independent operation of turrets in Atmo now feels so much better like this than it ha ever has. It does. Well, and I'm flying, like, for the people that are watching on the stream, uh, I don't know if it's hard or easy to tell, but when I'm flying here, I am... I'm flying the Constellation like a, a ginormous airplane. And you'd think in a game like this that would not feel good. It feels shockingly good. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that's just part of the, the flight model changes with the master modes. Exactly. Well, also with ships being, I'll say, in a more combat-driven speed in this game, and, you know, if you fly these, like, planes, being a gunner has a lot more opportunities to deal with smaller crafts flying around. Yeah. Well, like, we have a Gladius near us right now. I'm trying to deal with him. I'm going to be honest. I think, like, this, this flight change might see a lot of people going back to HOTASs as opposed to dual-stick setups. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I know personally I've... I've uh, where I don't do a lot of combat, um, I've looked into the more, like, uh, standard, like, flight yoke, like what you would think for, like, uh, Microsoft Flight Sim, like that, just because that seems like it would function well. Yeah, I just think, like, a dual stick is much less needed right now. And it's weird to say, like, very weird to say. But I'm not I'm not using a lot of the angular thrust a dual stick gets me and things like that. Also, there's something about being able to start engaging the enemy out at two kilometers with small turret guns that feels infinitely better. Yeah, because yeah. that's another thing with Master Modes, is they changed all the turrets and their... Um, their... Not arcs, their velocities too, like the range and velocity. <clears throat> it 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 makes like our job as like fighter screening easier because we don't have to wait till they're on top of us to actually engage. No, you can engage out at range. Like if they're trying to and, fight you, you can fight back. Right, and yeah, of course we're still fighting against you know AI, but like if we were fighting against a group of players. It it's a little more deadly. They're gonna have to. They can't just bum rush us. They they gotta actually make some kind of plan because we can effectively create a bubble of fire around the ship, two kilometers out. Exactly. What well, well, I'm so I'm I, seeing I, it as I'm flying here. You guys are like keeping Gladius, things sorted. Like <laughs> that Gladius was under us the whole time trying to get shots, and I was peppering him, and he was trying to actually get away. He did not want to. He didn't want to stay down there. No, and like, admittedly, not a lot of ships do. In this current flight mode, you would not want to stay on a constellation because, like, it, it is a, not a good time. Also, uh, I am using four size fives as our main, like, combat weaponry here, so, like, that definitely <laughs> plays a point. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, it, it just feels so much nicer than it used to. No, and it's it's indescribable. And like again, if anybody has questions in the channels or in the chats, like feel free to ask. Because I know we've just been kind of gushing over this new system, but it really yeah. it really feels. Once you use it, you'll you'll see it. It's it feels so good. I can't wait for all ships to have this. It's gonna be nice. I can't wait to not want to go back. Right. Well, e even right now, uh, I'll say at the, the slower pace that combat is, it feels a lot more intense. Yeah, and like, I think a big part of that is we can actually focus on what's going on, so we're forced to like keep ourselves in there. And I'm not terrified about a Gladius. That's... Um, that's a huge thing that, like, in this 
play session is different than previous play sessions. Like, right. As a Connie, I feel like I'd be very, very scared about a Gladius or like anything else huge. Ooh, actually, that might be scary. Oh, all right. We got a hammerhead. Oh. Let's go. Bug Smasher. All right, let's give him. Let's <laughs> give him everything we got. I think he's gonna rip us apart. But oh, oh yeah. Oh, actually, maybe not. Holy crap. Uh, maybe he won't rip us apart. Well, another thing I'm, I'm liking is that the, the turrets are also having to screen our little AI friendlies there. Yeah, they're taking our buddies out. But that's good because I know in you know older patches, when you're up against the hammerhead and you have a couple of AIs with you, they, it doesn't matter. All, all turrets are on you. Um, yeah, Robbie the Wise just, just went down. Well, they weren't too wise, but... Clearly one, yeah, one um, of the most wise. <laughs> but beforehand, when you engaged a, a hammerhead like this, all those turrets were just on you, regardless. Now, they're actually picking targets and dividing the firepower. Now, they're putting it all on us now, because we're the big SIG and <laughs> we're the ones that have been doing the damage, but like... <laughs> I don't know, I, mean, I feel nice like to I see have the power it's... to break out. Yeah, yeah, if you need to, we could... We could disengage. Well, you guys are still able to engage, and I've just broken off uh, his, yeah. not his effective range, but like... Um, to a point where you could dodge his shots and... Yeah, you couldn't do this in the uh, Constellation before. No. And with something like this, when, when the eventuality of, you know, uh, engineering gameplay comes into place, you can break off and... There he goes. Oh, there he goes. He's, he's you could break off, and nice. Um, what was I saying? Oh, you could break off and have the engineer repair the ship while we're still engaging mm -hmm. and keeping them, you know, uh, uh, you know, at a distance. Yeah, that was that was weirdly. I don't want to say weirdly effective, but like. No, that's probably the way to say it. It was weirdly effective. Yeah, it was effective yeah. and it was enjoyable. So I'm going to pull a hammerhead out. Or does somebody else want to okay. fly the hammerhead and I'll multi-crew them? Um, I could fly the hammerhead. I, I enjoy okay. flying it. Sure. Uh, multi-crew um, is enabled. Okay, I will enable. How do I choose you now, oh. though? I think if I... I think I might have to. Okay, I'm deployed. So see if you can see me now. Yep, there you yeah, are. There you I'm go. able to deploy on you, same as beforehand. Right. Nice. Yep, I'm in. Where am I? You're in the back left I'm in, turret. I'm in the back left. Boo. Okay, I think that's that's good. You can choose which number of turret you want to be on. That's that's kind of interesting. Oh, can you? And Drex is the Drex is the front right. Uh, you might. I think you might be able. Can he redeploy? Oh. Oh, hold on. I exited a turret. I'm walking around inside the hammerhead. Oh. Oh. So you just okay. choose where you want to sit. All right, just go for it then, I guess. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, what oh, turret are you in, Drex? I'm in the front right. Yeah, so I'm go front left, front I guess. Left. Yeah. Yeah. That is nice. I was able to get out and walk to a different turret. I'm trying to decide if top and bottom is the way to go, but front, right, yep. and left is probably the way to go, so Icarus can, uh, can get aimed up. There we go. Well, now both our sides are covered, so... Oh, this flies so much better than it used to. What is this? Yeah, you can gush about right. it now. Oh! <laughs> it's not a brick! It actually no. turns! Uh, okay, where did you go to, uh, to get your, not fire mode, your <coughs> gyro? gyro? It's going to yeah. be your, uh, so you got your main center screen. It's the switch on the left-hand side. Oh, there we go. Gyro switched. Cool. I feel like I'm sitting what? way farther back in this turret than normal, but. It does feel that way.
I think this is gonna be crazy, though. Oh yeah, no, that's gonna be fun. Uh, now I might not have guns myself, but you got, you got missiles. <laughs> Ooh, that, uh, that ESP, I don't know if it's just me, because I might have something turned off, but the turret ESP is way down. It is. Well, I am not using a stick. Are you, are you mouse I am stick? on a stick. Okay, so yeah, it feels a little different for you. I'm, I am mouse, so I have a much different experience. Okay, this little guy's quick. Oh yeah, yeah there. There we go. Warning: There are multiple hostiles inbound. <clears throat> yeah, you're gonna what see great content here because I'm just bad at turrets, it seems. <laughs> well, I am noticing a difference, you know, with between this turret and the Connie because this doesn't have the same degrees of movement. Yeah. So once it moves beyond the like 180 degree field I have forward or to the side, it's just I, I can't do anything. Yeah, I might try and Which, grab that top turret. That might not be a bad idea. Actually, I will, I'm gonna do that. If you, yeah. I say yeah. While well, well, you're in the middle of combat, I'm gonna swap turrets. I say I'm going to the top. <laughs> if you want to go to the bottom. Yeah, it works for me. Um, I don't remember how to get to the bottom in the hammerhead. If you want to know how often I play in the hammerhead, it's uh, all the way at the back. Okay. Oh, I can hear that's cool though. In the hall. Right, yeah, I can hear that, and it's awesome that while he's able to to adjust or re reposition or whatever he needs to do, we can move to a different turret. Yeah, the fact that we just like shifted into a new turret, ready to go. All right, I'm back on on top. There we go. That was hilarious that I managed, like, well, not just I, but. Two of us managed to switch turrets mid combat in Arena Commander. Right? Uh, what are we fighting against? Heard of. It's a oh, hornet. Yeah, you'll have to call it. Okay, it does, does it have ballistics on it? <laughs> Whatever it is, it has nothing on it now. Because I. It, granted, it, it very well, very well could have just been the game being the game. But I swear I saw projectiles coming through the hole while I was walking. Uh, that is I, that is very plausible. It happens. I would love if the the ballistic penetration is is you know really going. Oh yeah, like speaking about because you guys said before. It's crazy to be able to like two kilometer engage somebody. But, yeah, no, that's that's wild. <laughs> it's different. It, you're not used to it. it. You're like, okay, let me wait for him to you know close the distance. Not you, you don't gotta do that. No, nope. no, like you gotta be accurate at it, those ranges, but like, <clears throat> I feel like w when you're playing against actual people, even still, the accuracy isn't that big of a concern just because you can saturate that area with fire and then dare them to come get you kind of thing this aiming pip is a little hard to see though i will say it it is i'm i'm iffy on that but then again i'm sure things can be changed and things probably will change mm -hmm. and I, got, I haven't had time to actually mess around with controls and the the master mode stuff and the eptu so i'm flying by the seat of my pants but It's so weird to have this thing go where I want it. Yeah. Right. Ships don't do that. that. Right. 
it goes where it wants, and then you just enjoy the ride. Yeah. Or at least it used to. Okay, I need to see if uh, ESP is just off in general. <clears throat> Cause, uh, oh, it's on apparently. Oh, but like master modes, it might be off. Okay, we'll need to experiment with that. Yeah, I killed Terrell Toto Cochran. Oh, nice. I, 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 I love not, these names. <laughs> not that I need aim assist or anything, um, but it is kind of weird having it on turrets for so long and then like not. <laughs> Not. I'll say now, now we're getting to ways you guys are gonna have fun. Both of you are gonna have your own targets going rampant here. So, yeah, I'm oh, just yeah. trying to keep things in view. Uh, you were right. That yeah, that's like the... aim at whatever's closest to you or whatever is in your sight line is a very nice uh, thing. I do oh, yeah. need to turn that back on. I think because I didn't like it when flying, but. Well, yeah, which uh, makes sense when you're, you know, piloting a, a ship, especially a larger ship, but where my only job is to, I'm playing a point-and-click adventure right now, it's nice that it can just auto-target what's closest to me. Yeah, you just it'll just take whatever target the, is in your view. The ability to rotate this thing and turn it at a better rate for you guys as gunners on a hammerhead is so weird. <laughs> oh yeah, because, like, we're only two turrets, but I think... Uh, I don't know about 10 forwards experience, but I rarely am not in position to fire at something. Oh yeah, yeah, I've, I've always got something in my field of view. The ability to actually turn and adjust for you guys at a rate where it's not like, okay, I'll get back to you in two to three business days. Exactly. Right, yeah. We, we can make a call out about a large group coming and you can adjust us to be in a better firing position just immediately. Mm. Well, and in, in a weird way, um, again, like, for those of you guys watching our stream tonight, we're doing a lot of things in the game, like, flight-wise, that we would normally have to be very communicative about to get any success. But with Icarus's ability to put the ship around in what is arguably just a reasonable way, we kind of just point and shoot. Oh yeah, I mean, that's like I said, that's, that's pretty much what I'm doing right now, which is not a bad thing because it lets me focus on the the, the main mission for me, just kill targets. I don't have to fight with a lot of things. Let me tell you, it is weird being in a hammerhead. I'm like, bam, like we're gonna get ripped up. Where's a giant target? Nah, nah. The the hammerhead's actually a threat with two gunners right now. This is weird. Oh yeah, it's it's holding out. <laughs> and I saw that a uh, little bit there where that vanguard just decided to kamikaze us, and we just pushed through and we're still going. Dude, you want to know what the wild part is? There ain't no red hole damage. We're fine. <laughs> I'm seeing that, yeah. The shield sucked up the, the hit. Yeah, the only... Like, it's not like back in the day when the only thing that kept you alive in a hammerhead was just a ridiculous amount of DPS. Yeah. Yeah, no. And what's cool is the, the the targets that are hitting us with ballistics, I can hear the difference in the ballistic rounds, and I can see our hull directly getting hit versus oh, yeah. the lasers are hitting our shields instead. Yeah, and the, the so, things that are going into the hull, you can hear them, like, tick off. Yeah, that makes me very happy. I don't know what I'm shooting at that's out front of us, but... If, oh, if it's red, it's dead. I say, yeah, <laughs> take a, if it's red, take a, it's dead. Take a page from Liberty Prime. If it's a red pip, just hit it. Hit it, just kill it. Well, it's so... It's weird, actually. I know we could use the radar currently in the game for these, but at the rate we could turn, and I'm watching all the red pips, I'm trying to rotate and keep the ship in a position where I know both of you can at least fire at something. Well, and yeah, okay. it, it, the funny thing is, it's working. It, it's no longer a, you know, uh, let, let me think about it. Nope, now they're over there. Okay, let me go back. Oh, no, now they're back over there. It's just, nope, let me, let me do that for you guys. I got you. 
Well, an, an example just... of like the turret gameplay with the master modes feeling better is, um, like, with no ESP, it's kind of frustrating to hit your shots. And like, I'm not the best turret gunner ever. I'm, I'm definitely a better pilot than I am a gunner. Um, that said, though, like you have to be skilled, and if you have the skills, it pays off. What's it? Uh, oh no. I'm used to flying. I fly decoupled usually in like fighter ships. I usually kind of don't in bigger ships. With the new master mode speeds, flying decoupled in a hammerhead is turning out to be incredibly viable. It's weird. Because it moves, it maneuvers. It's crazy. So, a, a ship that maneuvers. Just for, just for reference, I think I, I think I crashed. So okay. Uh oh, <laughs> I'm here in spirit. <laughs> All right. I say hopefully lobby rejoin, but that might not work in a Nuri commander lobby. Oh, oh, hold on. It's trying. It's fighting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm about to say for for all the for all the wonderful things we can say about it, it it's still it, it's, spiritually it's still that same old game we love. <laughs> it still starts. Well, that's what I like, and the Star System is unique like that. And I mean, even now, one of the things I'm realizing when joining about master modes is bullets not disappearing at a certain range makes these fights a lot more cinematic. <clears throat> yeah. Oh yeah. Because you're duking it out. Like, you go after a target, and it is a battle. It is not just, like, one and done, game over. Exactly. Like, this constellation is... It is a battle. Like, right now, like, I was actually able to pull away to get into missile engagement range as a hammerhead and actually, you know, fight it myself as well, which is weird as shit. Well, you were <laughs> able to do that against a Connie... That flies like a Connie should. There we go. I fully crashed. All right, cool. Full crash. Okay. <laughs> I will try and sit for. Let me join back in. You never know, but yeah, probably right. not with the master modes. Well, well this we is technically a public mo or public lobby, so we could see. Yeah. True. We also all know the good old fly backwards to stay, you know, in a fight. Works on the hammerhead now. Well, there we go. <laughs> Never thought that would work. And it's a push and pull. Like that's yeah. that's the other thing is like pushing and pulling. It just it just feels not bad. It feels not shit. <laughs> I I know we mentioned it uh, a couple episodes ago when we discussed Smash Mode. I think it's the first time. Obviously, people are upset because big changes. But it's changes that need it to happen. Yeah, like, this is... Yes, it's going to change flight, and, like, people who have been practicing flight for the last, like, three years are going to be pissed because it's, it's different. Different is bad. Different is scary. But, like, all things considered, this is the different we needed. Well, I would say, finally... Big ships are scary. Yeah. yeah. Like, this this hammerhead is a beast. It The hammerhead has been made fun of ever since I can think of its existence, because it just wasn't good. Yeah, like, it's got... It's got overwhelming firepower, which is great. And, like... I, I can't deny that overwhelming firepower is awesome. But, like survivability being a thing I'm, I'm very excited 100% once uh, <clears throat> I think once master modes comes to the PU and comes to every ship maybe for a stream I'll get us out to do 890 master modes combat and see what happens <laughs> that could be fun <laughs> that would be funny because I so feel like it would be ridiculous for reference, it is not letting me join, but okay. 
if when I try and join, it shows that there are three out of four people in that lobby. So I'm guessing that it's not letting me because it thinks I'm still stuck in there for some yeah, reason. Yeah, you're still in here somehow. And the other thing that's nice about the this new flight model is that right there, ships love to charge you. I was actually able to move because we're not moving at mock Jesus and you can't <laughs> change your direction. Mm. I was also going to say, for that Connie, um, I don't know, well, I, I guess, I don't know if it was seen on the stream, but the, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to say lead, but like, the range at which your turret dials into is automated. It doesn't just stick and dial at like 5,000 meters. If a ship comes in, the rounds pull together tighter. Mm hmm. Uh, your your projectile convergence distance. Yes, is, that's the one. It, it, it auto adjusts depending on that, which is a beautiful thing. <laughs> well, and like something CIG has had, like on their map of things they want to do, for what I can only describe as ages, but like it never worked. CIG has a lot of those things that like. It just never worked. And I know it's Arena Commander, but like hit registration feels significantly better. It does. Like I can I can tell when I'm hitting my targets. And I'm hopeful that that's just like uh, because of master modes, it's able to calculate. Um, well, it's able to calculate damage better and like more accurately. Now, like that could totally be just me being naive and hopeful but like i want to be naive and hopeful i don't See, think it's a bad thing to be hopeful considering you know the way things are going with it i don't i don't think it's a bad thing to be hopeful about the game the other thing is all the transparency here that's been happening with the game and having our hands on the early access and it feels this good and we'll, we'll call this an unpolished mode I cannot wait to see how this is going to feel, like, done. Also, the fact that they get a missile fired at me and I can fire one flare and they're not hitting me is amazing. Oh, yeah. Countermeasures work. Oh, who, who would have thought? Uh, a game so Ted, changer another, right there. Another thing I've got for you, as a question, just because you know between the Constellation and the Hammerhead, was... The Constellation's turret significantly faster than the Hammerhead? Because this feels kind of slow, but like I feel like that's on purpose. It... So... It felt faster. I don't know if it actually was. Just because... Obviously, it moves different. And you're on a smaller ship. But it did feel faster. Okay. Because I believe that's a thing. But like... I didn't want to say it was unless you perceived it as a thing. No, yeah, I, I did feel that. And, I mean, makes sense because you're in a ship with how many turrets? Four, five, six, right? Yeah. Yep. So you're responsible for your little area. You don't need to cover everything. Whereas on the Connie, you've got two turrets, a top and a bottom. So you have a lot of space you got to cover. It makes sense to move faster. Well, on the hammerhead, you like, you theoretically have two turrets aimed at a target, regardless of what you do. Contact. Yeah. Because even if you're a top or bottom turret, you still have the turrets on the sides that do have up and down movement. They're not, they can't get the same angle as you can, but there's plenty of opportunities where multiple turrets could fire top and bottom. Well, and everybody's got like, a 180 degree field of reference out from the front of their turret which means like most turrets have a lot of field of reference yeah and there's a lot of overlap like this turret feeling clunky and it, it's felt clunky for ages like it's not new that a hammerhead turret feels kind of clunky yeah but like it makes sense that it feels clunky yeah um, it doesn't. It doesn't just feel like you know a mistake or just bad. I don't know. Oh, bad game. It, 
another thing is, it's clunky, but it's not inoperable. It, it makes sense. It's a heavy-duty turret. Yeah, like, there's, yeah. there's quite a bit of mechanics going on to move this turret around. And the amount of guns firing off the turret is immense. <clears throat> now I'm looking forward to other multi-crew slash turreted ships in the future. Like, uh, I want to see yeah, how the other Redeemer is going to feel. Ships. Because you know, the, the Redeemer has multiple turret sizes. It's not just multiple copies of the same thing. So, I'm, I'm curious how those are going to work in conjunction with each other, as well as I guess the Vanguard has one. So, I I'm going to put this out there. Drex, I'm tracing the turn speed of a Gladius with a hammerhead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, I don't that's... I don't know if that's, like, if I like that or not, but, like, power two? Well, I... Power two? I was <laughs> boosting. Okay. Well, so, I, I think that's... A big part of that, because I'm, I'm watching, obviously I'm watching Drex's stream. I think a big part of that, too, is the way that you versus that Gladius was flying. You're not stationary, but you're turning. Whereas that Gladius was flying in a specific direction. So, like, when it comes to maneuverability, at the end of the day, the Gladius is going to outdo the Hammerhead 10 out of 10 times. There's no way around that. It was but, more a pivot that he was doing. Right. But you were able to keep up with the target. You couldn't match it, but you could keep up with it. And I mm. think that's important. Yeah, I think that's like, a good balance there. Again, turret feels clunky. I don't particularly dislike it, though. I don't hate it. That makes sense. And it's what weird. I want to see... Go ahead. I say it's weird, but like, I don't know. I, I love it in a way I've not loved it before. Also, being able to actually fire missiles here and hit my targets in the hammerhead is. This is weird. <laughs> missiles are working. What? What is happening? <clears throat> a hammerhead think... with one gunner is doing this well, and it's because he can maneuver the gunner around. Right. Uh, imagine six gunners. <laughs> I th one of the things I want to see, or one of the some of the ships I want to see how they're going to feel, is things like the Scorpius and the Hurricane. Yeah. Where? Oh, yeah. It's it's c compared to like the Connie and the Hammerhead. It's a pretty fast fighter, but you still have that support turret. Yes. So I'm curious how how that's going to work. When I said already, the 890 is like on my list as obviously it's a capital ship. Um, right. And like, it's a weird, ar it should be a weird archetype because it should be a very fast capital ship. Like for all oh, yeah. things considered, the 890 is a fast capital ship. So I'm hoping right. it is. Single hammerhead turret versus fully crewed. Let's see who wins. <laughs> I, I worry, but uh, well, let's give her. <clears throat> like, I'm, 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 I'm excited for the little bits that we're seeing now, and I'm even more so excited for the future of what this is going to give us. Exactly. Oh, I think I'm actually getting hull hits. Are we through with shields or no? I think I've I've been hammering them with missiles pretty hard. Okay, well it looks like we might be through shields, so. Yeah, you're unfortunately your MFDs don't have target info. Yeah, no, I have no idea what I'm doing to him. I just know that like <laughs> he's he's upsetty know. spaghetti. You don't know who you are or why you're here. All you know is that you need to shoot. 
Yeah, I must continue to fire bullet. <laughs> Oh, I'm definitely like, hitting Paul. You like, can see being you, boom. <laughs> nice. I want, I want to see this thing fully banned in master modes. Yeah, oh, I, I feel like that'll be wild. What I think would be a fun mode for that, if you, you got all six turrets fully manned, is the, uh, I don't know what it's called, but where it's just never ending. The and endless man oh, storm. Yeah. That would be fun just to see just how far you can make it. Oh, because it might be the one ship in the game that can hold down. Because um, when we did it with Gladiuses and stuff, they did not hold on <laughs> very tightly. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> but the Hammerhead, I could see that. I could see that doing well. I mean, even the even the the Connie with just the two turrets, I could still see that doing relatively well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that said, we did do two rounds of Arena Commander today, uh, which was probably pushing it on our timeline, but, uh, I think seeing what that hammerhead could do inherently was just well worth it. And we can take the good. 20 minutes over time just to like, uh, you know, it was, it was a good time. It was a good view. Good watch. Good play. Master modes is definitely a change, but from that alone, I think it's a welcome one. Yes, agree. Yeah, I think hugely, hugely welcome and hugely, hugely needed. Uh, ideally, yeah. next week we have something more for you guys than more master modes because we kind of went through all the stuff that uh, master modes means. But uh, we shall see. We'll kind of just Indeed. go with the flow as we go. And as usual, if anybody has any recommendations, please just throw them our way. We will do what we can with them. And of course, rest assured, for those interested, yes, the, the Zeus Mark One lore is coming. Um, we just wanted to talk some about, talk some more about what you saw today and other things, just because we've been, we've been getting good news pretty pretty regularly and we want to make sure we keep up on that we don't want to slip behind um but the lore is coming for the mark one rest assured all right icarus you have anything to uh to say before we cut the stream out no i i think i've said all i need to for what we did all right well thank you guys again for watching thanks everybody for showing up who showed up thanks anybody who asked some questions and uh we will see you guys 7 p.m. EST next Saturday. Have a good one. Bye-bye. See you guys.